Link to the source code and video transcript in the description. Tile maps are the bread and butter of both side-scrolling and top-down 2D games as they let developers quickly lay out levels with artwork, physics, and pathfinding all in one go. But they do have a downside in that they are fixed to a grid that is, in many cases, quite obvious. To get around this, a developer might use a smaller tile map grid size so that they can add in finer details, they might use tiles that are functionally identical to others but which have different artwork, or they might just layer tiles on top of each other to provide more variety in the environment. But sometimes what you really want is something so custom that it doesn't fit neatly within the limitations of a tile map. This is where I think the Polygon 2D node can come in handy. While it's normally used to simply draw polygons on the screen, I want to use this video to discuss another use for it that I've discovered, creating custom physics bodies. So first things first, what is the Polygon 2D node? Well, it's a node that lets you draw a polygon in 2D space, created either programmatically or in the editor, and it supports some nice features such as anti-aliasing, skeletal animation, and textures. In a basic use case, it might look something like this polygon that I've drawn here using the in-editor tools. And while the flat color I've used is not much to look at, you can texture these polygon 2Ds and end up with something much more serviceable. And as a side note, if you're curious about how I got the texture to repeat on the ground, I just enabled the repeat flag in the texture import settings. And while polygon 2D notes are a great resource for drawing custom shapes in the game, I found my interest pointing more towards how I could use them in a physics context so that I could draw a polygon in the editor and have it act as a physically simulated object in the game. And it turns out it's quite easy if you just want to use it as a static physics object, i.e. one that doesn't move and just provides a collision shape for other objects to hit. But it's a bit trickier to get it to work as a dynamic object, such as a rigid body. To test all of this, I set up a simple project containing three nodes. A ball node, which is just a rigid body with a sprite on it to test my physics bodies with. A polygon static body scene to demonstrate how to use the polygon 2D node with a static body 2D node. And a polygon rigid body scene to demonstrate this technique with a rigid body 2D node. And so I've gone ahead for this video and I've drawn a polygon for both the polygon 2D nodes using the built-in editor tools and applied the styling I want to them. So let's now take a look at each scene and see how they work. The ball scene, as I mentioned previously, is just a rigid body set up with a custom physics material to give it a little bit of a bounce and a sprite so that we can see it on the screen. The polygon static body scene is quite simple, containing a root polygon 2D node and a child static body 2D node. And I could even instantiate the static body 2D node at runtime, but I've added it here in the editor to make it easier to configure and change later on if needed. You know, say change the collision layers later on as my game expands. The script on the polygon 2D node is quite simple as well. All I have to do is create a new collision polygon 2D node, copy the points of the polygon 2D node over to it, and add this new collision shape as a child of the scene's static body. And that's enough to have this scene behave how I want it to. The concept behind the polygon rigid body scene is the same as the static body scene, but there are a couple of issues to deal with that the static body scene doesn't have. First of all, the center of mass on a rigid body 2D is determined by its origin, meaning I need to move the rigid body 2D to the center of the drawn polygon without also moving the collision shape or the polygon 2D node. Secondly, the polygon 2D node needs to move and rotate with the rigid body node, meaning it needs to either be the scene parent and then get reparented to the rigid body at runtime, or it needs to be created as a child of the rigid body from the get-go. For the sake of simplicity, I opted to just make it a child of the rigid body 2D node. It can still be drawn in the editor this way, you just have to right click on the scene and check editable children to make it appear. Unfortunately, this will expose all the children of the rigid body parent, which means it will clog up the scene tree a bit faster, especially if you add in other children over time. But I think this allows for a simpler and arguably better approach than reparenting at runtime, which involves swapping node positions relative to one another and requires at least one frame of inconsistency in the physics world, since we can't swap node positions until the tree is settled on first load. To solve the issues above, the code for this scene is a bit more involved than the static body scene. I first calculate the center of the drawn polygon and move the rigid body to that location, taking into account the polygon 2D node's relative position as well since the points of the polygon won't take that offset into account when moved to the new collision shape. And since this node is the parent of the scene, moving it means it will also move the polygon 2D node, so I want to make sure to remember where the polygon was originally located in the global space and reset its position after moving the rigid body 2D so that it still draws in the correct position. For the collision shape, I shift the drawn polygon by the amount calculated in the get polygon center function before applying it to the 
the collision shape. This seems to work better than using unshifted points and moving the collision shape after the fact. And I'm sure there's other ways to do what I've done here, but this method works and it doesn't feel too sloppy, so I'm gonna stick with it for now. So when I run the scene, I can see that everything works as expected. I'm able to draw static and dynamic polygons in the editor and have them become physics bodies in the world. And as previously mentioned, I'm not convinced the rigid body scene couldn't be programmed differently and better, but I'm also not as interested in using this method for dynamic physics objects as I am for static objects. So I'm gonna leave it as is for now as a proof of concept. And that's all I've got for this video. If you're interested in exploring this method further, I'd recommend checking out the Bordered Polygon 2D plugin that allows you to add textured borders to your Polygon 2D nodes, really letting you make something that's both sleek and sexy. The link to that will be in the description.